the start of every season, the eyes of the cycling world focus on Adelaide and we'll hit the velodrome to start things off for the season. It's the Adelaide Superdrome for the Adelaide Track League. Pretty straightforward if you haven't watched track cycling before. 60 laps of the track, first rider to complete the distance is the winner. Unless a lap is taken on the field, they automatically then become one lap ahead of the rest. Yeah, basically this is a road race condensed into like doing circles, essentially. While there's a little bit of a lull here, and the race doesn't seem to be under too much This is uh, James Moriarty coming through. Big Queenslander and a little bit of a move now as well. And Oliver Bledden from Western Australia. So as they went through, they realised there's a little bit of a gap. Hesitation as we get to eight laps to go now. Coming to the final kilometre now. And this is a very big move. Three laps to go inside the final kilometre. Three more laps. It's only 250 metres around this track. So it'll be the tactics starting to come into play. Bell lap. Here we go. One lap to go. 59 laps have been raced. And the gap looks big enough. It's going to be between these two riders. It's James Moriarty on the front. Oliver Bledden from Western Australia in second position. Out of the saddle. Up onto the shoulder now of Moriarty. And Bledden's going to come over the top and get the win. So he opens the night with a fantastic win in the scratch race. This is what he did out in front went hard and he's already hearing the sound of the bell but coming from behind as he did in the heat as well Darren Hicks straight around the outside and our Paralympic gold medalist number one as he goes down the back straight no one's going to get next near him so Hicks will come around to get the win and I think the handicapper has some <laughs> questions to answer um, but they have to line them all up in their order of their overall standings. The classification coming in at the top of the track is Maeve Plouffe up on the fence. Maeve Plouffe in second position, just making sure she's comfortably towards the front. So you can see hardly any effort put in by the riders at the front and a real sprint for the riders at the back to try and stay in. Who dives first. She has to make the move first, Maeve Plouffe here, I think. Tokyo Olympian. Up against an emerging talent in Martin Wallace. And they've both dived at the same time. So Plouffe goes down the back straight. Martin Wallace in the slipstream. It's hard to come up around the outside when you're so close to the back really of the rider in front. And just that extra strength made Plouffe absolutely motors through to pick up the win. And you can see how happy she was with that. He's only been on the bike for two weeks. Matthew Richardson to me is the favourite for this race. He lines up just underneath Matthew Glatzer there in the sassy. Hesitation for Barber in second position. Richo's had to go. Here he comes. Brister out in front. One lap to go. And Matt Richardson now straight around the outside. He's going to get it. We can call it now, or can we? Because here comes Matthew Glatzer. It's the two fastest Australian sprinters. And it's going to be Richardson ahead of Glatzer. Hargrave says, I want more, I want that front position. It's a fight now, it's a drag race. Can she get over the top? Can Clonan hold off on the inside? She's going to come back underneath. It was a real drag race between the two. Hargrave's on the outside, Clonan on the inside, but Hargrave's coming back around the outside as well. The endurance background perhaps from the rider in the black colours, and it's a turn oh. up. Hargrave's fought all the way those last two laps around the outside and out-muscled the national sprint champion. Came through the talent ID program through the schools here in Adelaide. Yeah. Great pickup. And I have to say, you don't come across anyone with a bigger smile or a more bubbly sense of humour than Annette Edmondson. Yeah, this is very, very special. Um, I was given a nice slap of honour over in um, in Britain when we finished the Track Series League, and that was special, but it wasn't home. And so to be able to, to acknowledge you guys for coming out and supporting us throughout my career, throughout all of these athletes' careers, like it's it's a big deal. And I'm very proud to be an Adelaidean. I'm very proud of all the people that have, are out here and my family. And um, I'm yeah, just it's just so nice to be able to come home and, and share that moment. Yeah, you can't overtake until the front rider has hit that uh, that medium strip or the tape in the middle of the straight. Darren Hicks just gaining a bit of speed momentum there as they come around to the finish. And it was at the back straight. It was Hicks indeed. Got that momentum, and Darren Hicks came away with the win for Team 2. Makes it more difficult to come around the outside. Back into some sprint dirt. Oh, a little shoulder and a head butt. Making Big. some room. Whoa, huge move from Blake Agnoletto. Frizzly's going to fight to come back around the outside. We'll see what the officials say after this because body contact mm. not very well looked upon by the officials. And Frizzly really squeezing <gasps> into Agnoletto there. Vincent Plough right, 
Graham Frisley, both Victorians, both know each other extremely well, and it's Plough Wright that leads down the back straight. Out of the saddle for Graham Frisley. Here he comes. He's into the slipstream. Plough Wright, such a strong sprinter, though, as is Frisley. Can he get round the outside? He's not going to get there. It's Jensen Plough Wright that comes away with a win. But also very good at riding right on that red line. <laughs> I made my opponent's ride as wide as possible. And quickly going between the two. Yeah. Good at that. I think it's called throwing a hook. Yeah, you can move as much. Oh, we actually have them here. Our tandem riders. And uh, our vision impaired riders are on the back. And our pilots, or our stokers, are the athletes on the front. They are essentially the eyes for our vision impaired riders. Yeah, and you can see the bikes moving a little bit too. They're very hard to navigate. They're not as twitchy as our individual sprinters, understandably, as they get the bell lap. Well, side by side, shoulder to shoulder as they go down the back straight, but it is Maddie McNeil that leads the way. Candace Kennedy, another go at it though, trying to come up the end. They're around the outside, but underneath, it is McNeil that'll come away to get the win. So that's... The first win goes to Matty McNeil. One lap to go now, and it's the team on front. It's Clems trying to hold off Bo Wooten, and here comes Wooten, the riders from the SASI, the South Australian Sports Institute. They've got lots of training in their legs. They've combined extremely well, preparing leading up to this event. And Bo Wooten and Luke White come through to get a comfortable win in the end. Bluff in second position. Shannon McCurley trying to come from behind as well. Right at the moment, though, it's Mar out in front. Here comes Maeve Bluff over the top, and she just gets there. So another five points to Bluff. And I'll come around to get 22 laps to go. Stewart and a big move, though. This is Polides, the under-23 Australian road champion. She was third in that combined women's and under-23 race last Sunday. She's on sensational form, first year in the under-23s, and she finished in the front group at the elite women's road race. Uh, putting on the pace, hurting the legs as they come into the final bell. Final lap, and it is Sophie Edwards. I said that she's the one that could come away and steal that third place from Alyssa Polides after her, her, uh, after her hard work of gaining a lap, and it is Edwards that's going to come around. Will Maeve allow her to get the 10 points? Yes, she will. So it's 10 points to Sophie Edwards. One lap to go. Hicks trying to come around the outside now. Paddy Best leads into the back straight, and here he comes, the Paralympic champion from Tokyo 2020. Straight around the outside, he's been a dominant force in the para racing here tonight. Winning the wheel race, winning the heats, and now look at him come through to win the para scratch race. Tasmanians looking good. Strong man in Lee on the front, comes through to pick up the five. Stretton gets three, so he will go to the outright lead. Down the back straight once more. Connor Lay leads on 47 points overall. He has a very handy buffer over Jensen Plowright and now extends that even more. And it's Plowright that has launched himself out of the peloton to try and pick up second place and get second six points for this final sprint. One lap to go now, Dalton Stretton. He picked up the first sprint. He will now pick up the second sprint. That will put him in contention for second overall. But it really all comes down to what Jensen Plowright can do in this final sprint. Connor Lay, he's the overall winner. He did so much throughout the race to dominate and win overall. Stretton takes the final sprint, gets the 10 points, and this is the one we want to see. And Plowright was third across the line. So he just holds on to second place.